Hi everyone, this is Gonzalo here and it's time for the Nilo Math Guide 3. Uh, it's going to be a long one, I'll show you guys why. So Nilo with a signature weapon as usual. We will move on to other weapons eventually. And today's video is going to be a long video. Okay, even by my standards. Because there are quite a fair bit of stuff I need to cover. And I'll suggest that you guys make yourself kind of comfortable. Yeah, a nice warm cup of whatever beverage you prefer and take your time to peruse through this because there's a lot of stuff for me to cover which is expected because Bountiful Call is a new mechanic it involves the team members EM it involves the number of application instances I also need to do I need to step you guys through how we will calculate Nilo's damage because of how Bountiful Calls work and the EM I've mentioned and finally with the updated uh, the final full damage figures I can also give you guys a EM target for the Nilo teammates and obviously I'll do artifact comparison as well for some reason I also greedy at the artifact comparison here as well <laughs> but yeah so end up this video actually is in terms of content is worth while splitting it into three different videos but the problem is that if I split it into three different videos the context will be lost like for the artifact comparison, it's not big enough to stand alone by itself unless you consider uh, a few minutes worth of video okay if you prefer that uh, but EM targets wise, the, the main thing about EM targets is I need the damage figures to be there to back it up but at the same time for the damage figures, I need the understanding of the EM buff or the EM, how much EM you really need right for you, for it to be justified on the damage math so it's kind of all link interlinked which is why we have such a long video today so bear with me uh, I definitely recommend you guys to take your time with this because there's uh, quite a bit of detail here okay so first off we go through the normal stuff that I usually have for the com videos right so first off we have the bloom com you have the dendro support and the dendro support slash main so basically it's dendro traveler or Coley on either now, if you really want to do a Dendro main, you can do Tinari, but although Tinari generates quite a fair bit on his, during his on-field time, I'm not 100% convinced that he's great, which is why I did a poll recently, right? Whether you want, you whether would you be interested in seeing Dendro main or Kokomi main? But not to worry, there will be more Dendro characters in future, like Kusanali or Nahida, whatever you can call her. There's Kave, there's El Haitan, Baitu, Yao Yao, or the, all these are the few that we know now. Obviously, they don't come so soon. They will come gradually throughout ver version uh, 3 patches. So I'm not that worried about Dendro restriction, to be honest. Now, Hydro support slash main. Again, because it's because of the Nilo passive, right? We are going for 2 Dendro to Hydro here. So Nilo either the, either the main or the Ophir enabler. But for this video, we will do her as the main DPS. I will do a subsequent one uh, with her as the Ophir enabler. For the second Hydro, I actually recommend a healer here because there's no Dendro healer yet. So it's either Kokomi or Budget version of Barbara. Technically speaking, you can go for Mona with Moto Prototype Ember, but Prototype Ember's heal may not be enough, that's number one. Number two, her damage bonus will not help with Bountiful Core damage. Though it does help a uh, main DPS Nilo. So in the event that you want to know a healer even with the self damage from Bountiful Core Explosion, I guess a feasible character would be Yelan. Oh, sorry, got cut off a little. Now, since she also have high HP, or her or Nilo being on field does uh, make it more manageable in terms of receiving the self damage. And along with a C4 giving message HP boost and C6 giving you fast AoE Hydro, which is more more cost, it may be worth considering if you have these level concessions. I'll test it out to be sure, but generally speaking, I would still recommend a healer. And if Nilo is main, obviously Sinchu can work too, but one thing to know is that Sinchu's heal is, is really insufficient. I mean, yes, she he may have heal, he may have a heal compared to Yelan not having heals, but I can tell his heal is not it's not enough. If you see the amount of damage that Bounty Fuko is doing later, All right? Now, once we get a Dendro healer, it will open up a lot more options like Ayato, etc. So I really hope we get a Dendro healer eventually, and I think we should, like Baitu, Yao Yao. <laughs> okay, anyway. Let's see how that goes. That's way, 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 way in the future. Now, for the purpose of this math guide, I will do DMC, Kole, Nilo, and Kokomi, where Nilo is the mid. 
The coin is also flexible to allow Kokomi to be the mid. Uh, not that I'm saying that Kokomi can't be the mid. Okay. And my next video will probably be Kokomi mid, since the poll results are all favoring Kokomi. So that's the coin setup. Now let's talk about rotation itself. So this is the C0 rotation, C0 plus rotation. And let me just add plus here. So DMC E followed by Kokomi E followed by DMC Q, Kokomi Q, Kikole E Q, DMC E, Nilo E, and Nilo Actions. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of things to talk about for the rotation. Now, the moment you see this, I think the Kokomi mains will kill me because I'm completely wasting her Q, right? Her Q only extends her E by like what? One second? Or two seconds, the most? It's not well utilized. And I know that. And it irks me a lot. But I tried moving around. I can tell you that if I delay this Kokomi Q any further, it will reduce the Danjo application during Nilo's action window. And if you remember, we want Dendro to be the Aura, Hydro to be the trigger. So, yeah. And on top of that, I also cannot drop Kokomi's Q. Because I was thinking, if, since we only extend it by 1 to 2 seconds, why not just drop it, right? If you drop Kokomi's Q, you will not be able to cast DMC's E this second time. Because the time, the, the, the time of the rotation has not reached that point yet. The DMC's E cooldown is not ready yet. And we need it to do twice for the two S pro for this props because the energy generation in this comp is pretty bad. It's average to bad. Uh, it ranges from average to bad. So we need that second DMCE. So Yeah, but just to be clear, the rotation is set up optimally for Nilo as main and for the bountiful cost generation. It's just Kokomi's Q that's not optimized. It hurts me a little or maybe quite a bit, but I tried a few presentations, there's no way we can optimize Kokomi's Q without negatively impacting Nilo and Bountiful Cause. So, yeah, she, she has to take the hit. Now, maybe this con will be more optimized with Kokomi as main driver. In fact, it's most likely because Nilo's action can start at the very first portion. Uh, but that would be Nilo as off-field enabler, not main. Hmm. So, to be honest, it feels like Yelan slash Sinchu with a, bad, with a future Dendro healer would be better if we are using Nilo as main in multiple core con or Ayato or whoever else you want it to be it's just in terms of the options yeah I'm not saying Kokomi is bad I'm saying that Kokomi as the off-field character here can't be uh, well optimized or utilized due to the way the uh, if we want to optimize Nilo e, Nilo's damage as well as the bounties multiple core so yeah, don't murder me, Kokomi means. I tried. So C0 versus C2 versus C4 rotation wise. I initially thought of separating C0, C2 and C4, but technically speaking, it's not much of a difference. Between C0 and C2 is NA X3 versus NA S4 before Q to play safe for C2 effect. But if doing the fourth NA before Q results in missing a a luminous illusion at the end of a lunar prayer then for sure you need you should do two you should do three x and a instead of four before c2 however for c2 plus the hydro resistance strap for q is definitely more important than one luminous illusion because it's a bountiful call Come. okay now between c0 and c4 i mean no, okay, I shouldn't just say that it's for the body full call, it's also because of the Q, right? The Q damage is, 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 is her highest multiplier. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, between C0 and C4, the difference between like whether Q is cast before E, right? Because if you know how her C4 works, you need to finish the third dance there and your Q will get a 50% damage boost. But in the first place, casting Q, uh, you, you need to cast Q after Bountiful Call. To make it better for bloom reactions. Two instances of application along with a pretty big Q A O E. So that's like two bountiful cores per enemy. I.e. you can hit at least hit the reaction ICT per Q. Not to mention C2's hydro resistance threat. Yeah, I, I may have forgotten a little about how the C4 trigger condition is like, but what I want to bring across this point here is you can at least hit the reaction ICT per Q. You know what? Let's look at the C4. I have it here. 
Yeah, so you need to finish the third dance step. So at C0, you don't need to. That's what I'm trying to say here. Like, for example, a C0 character, you may consider casting the Q before E. But what I'm trying to say here is that casting Q after body full cost is better for bloom reaction because it's two instances of application with a big AOE. Okay? That's what I'm trying to say here. Now, I have decided to make it one simple rotation regardless of constellation level. Okay, but just bear in mind the potential need to keep it in NAX3 before Q instead of NAX4 for C0C1, just in case, which is what I've talked about here. But generally speaking, the rotation looks like this. So there may be a potential for the C0 and C1 to be NAX3, while C2 plus is NAX4. But for now, we'll take it as NAX4 throughout to simplify things. Now, that's one, one last thing about optimizing. If you want to fully optimize the NAs during Luna prayer and only cast the Q after it ends, you can. But you you look at this, okay? You look at this. Your NAs are done. After your NAs are done, because what you are doing here is that you are actually taking away some time from your Luna prayer duration. So you lose some NAs, right? <clears throat> but the problem is that it's not so straightforward. If you cast the Q only after the Luna prayers ends, what happens is that you actually lose the ability to generate multiple calls with Q because the DMC Dendro application will end by then. And if DMC Dendro application ends by then, Coley's already end. Coley's have already ended, right? So at the same time, the C4 effect will also have expired because C4 effect only lasts for 8 seconds. Luna Prayer lasts for 8 seconds. So if you cast your Q after Luna Prayer ends, your C4 effect is also gone. And not to mention, regardless of constellation, you are actually backloading her highest damage challenge to the end. So, to be honest, her Q is in a really awkward position in terms of timing for her as a mid DPS. If I have to pick one thing that's not well designed for her, it will be this. Like, if people ask me what's not well designed about Nilo, this will be the first thing that I think of. Her Q. The Q timing. At least for her as a mid DPS. You actually don't have an issue for FWU enabler. And I'll, I'll talk about that in the next video, once I have it done. Okay, so this is the rotation. I hope you guys understand that I already know that there are some things that are not as uh, optimized per se, but uh, it can be helped. I really tried a few rotations or permutations and in order to maximize Nilo and Bountiful cost, this is it. Okay, so next is the energy. Energy is pretty straightforward. Obviously, since C4 Nilo generates energy, I have to have a C4 Nilo energy map here, right? So what you see here, is the ER levels required for each of the character without C4 and with C4. Basically with C4, the main difference is Nilo's ER. And I gotta say, ER requirements are not that low unless you consider 140 plus as low. But to me, I don't think that's low. Uh, maybe you can say that's average. Because the energy generation are at best average for members in this comp. Nilo needs 145 ER without C4, and this is with 2x DMC E and 2x Fervonius Prots. Okay, you need 2 Fervonius Prots and 2 DMC E's. Yeah, you see all this, yeah? Kokomi's 140 ER is with R5 Prototype Ember 2, without she will need more ER. But for Kokomi, it's not so bad. Oh, wait, wait, yeah, we do need to cast a Q because of that 2 seconds, so the DMC E can be cast. Oh. Now, with C4 Nilo, Nilo's ER can be reduced to 110 instead, which means more HP, more EM. So, that's good stuff. Or more crit stats. So, that's good. But is it really worthwhile? We'll cover it in future. Alright, so these are the ER levels, so that you know. Okay, this is pre-C4, this is C4 plus. Okay, now let's talk about the number of elemental application instances, because that's important, right? In order for us to know how to calculate the bountiful core damage. So Nilo does generate 5 with a sword dancers, 2 with Q, because Q is within Lunar prayer duration, that's why there's only 5 with a sword dancers. Okay. So total 7. DMC, 2 from 2E, 5 from Q equals 7. Wait, let me double check. The sword dancers... Ah, yeah, 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 because it starts from 0. At 0 mark, you always have one application. It's the same thing for Kole, by the way. I stick 4 from Q here is because... When your Kole first hits, right, that 0 second, it does trigger your reaction. So it's 0, 3, 6, 9. That's why it's 4. Okay? 0, 3, 6, 9. 
It's not 369. 0369. Likewise for Nilo. Wait. If we have one kill... Ah, should be okay because of the queue causing some duration time. So it will shorten the... Uh, it will cover the ICD. So that's why it's 5. Okay. Sorry. I did this some time back. Because there, I spent a lot more time at the bottom here. Okay. So DMC, 2 from 2E, 5 from Q equals 7. Kole, you have 2 from E, 2 from Sprout, 4 from Q, 1 from C6 if you have. So it's either 8 or 9. Kokomi, you have 6 from E, 1 from Q. So total instances, basically. Uh, we, we will talk about it here. But generally speaking, we want more Dendro applications so that Hydro can be the 0.5s trigger instead of Dendro being the 2.8s trigger. Uh, case you need your theory wise. So the above is decent because we have slightly more Dendro thanks to Kole. Now it's going to be very hard to provide an accurate theory crafting of the broom plops and the bro prop distribution. So this is how I'll do it. I mean, we all know, right? This is the hardest part about doing theory crafting for Nilo. So given the initial setup in the rotation, some of the blue reactions will not be bountiful cause. But since we are setting up a few instances of the Android application right before Nilo, which will be the DMC, which will be the Kole EQ plus DMC E. So that's a lot of dendro at one shot. And we assume that the dendro application from DMC Q offset Kokomi E, right? So what I mentioned, the Kole, e, Kole EQ and DMC E still is still there. So for Nilo as the main, I think we can assume that she can prop majority of her attacks as the bloom trigger i.e. 5 of 7 but the full cost are triggered by her per enemy. There should be 14 blooms total per enemy because we have the lowest number we have between the two elements is 14 for the hydro. Right? It's 14 hydro, 15 or 6 dendro, 16 dendro. So there should be 9 other blooms where the other 3 members per enemy. Now remember one very important thing. I know this does not look impressive but you gotta know that this is per enemy. The cost generation are multiplied per enemy with quadratic scaling with a huge AOE, okay, with a big AOE from her then her bountiful core. Now, out of nine of these blooms, we should have at least five bountiful. The first four is part of setup in rotation, but just note that second rotation onwards, it will be all bountiful cores because the golden chalice bounty lasts for 30 seconds. Now, this is also an advantage for the off field enabler because you can start the lower action right at the top and switch, switch her out to do other stuff. Unlike for Nilo main DPS, and I'll cover it in the next video too. So I hope you guys see how I determine the number of bloom props. Okay, now technically speaking, you may say that oh, some cases dendro may trigger instead, and then they hide the, the there's more consumption of the ICU out of the gauge, etc. But if you notice, right, I'm not even factoring the 0.5x for the dendro. I'm not. I'm not factoring the 0.5x to give more reactions. I'm basically limiting it only by the 7, by the Hydro application. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Alright. <laughs> Ironically. At least for my math. That's what I'm trying to assume here. So that's why I say it doesn't matter, because I'm trying to minimize that impact. So, that is the bloom calculation that we will have. For bountiful cause. Now, let's talk about the important notes in session. I'll cover signature weapon and a few artifact permutations here. That's how I'm able to do artifact comparison even here as well. Now, Nilo's ICD, uh, this is the same as the previous math guides, but I'll just quickly run through it. The standard ICD on each attack in E and Tranquility Aura is a 2 second ICD. It's actually slightly lower than 2 seconds. It's something like 1.9 or 1.95. I'll take it as 2 seconds and it's 1U. So it's pretty much the same as Kokomi's uh, E. Uh, okay, so this is for this. This needs to be updated. For Q, it's 2. I two application or no ICD. I should say no ICD on the two hits. Now we will cover Nilo main in blue rotation first, followed by Alpha and Blade next video, and maybe forward with it after. Uh, but I may go to Sino right after the fourth Alpha enabler. Okay. Now five bountiful calls generated by Nilo main. Remaining five bountiful by other teammates in first rotation, and you will be nine by other teammates in the second rotation onwards. off your enabler will generate even more at C0, and we'll cover that next video. I mean, not just C0, right? I mean, if it generates at C0, then it generates at C, the other constellations as well. Oh, I can't believe it's already 90 minutes uh, for this video. Okay, now let's talk quickly talk about Nilo main stats and artifact foundation. I think that's what most folks will be interested in. So let me go straight up here. 
So you see here, I have the different artifact permutation. Let's talk about it first. So I have the two TOTM with two HOD. Cookie, cookie means cookie cutter build, which is HP Hydro Crit. Here we have the two TOTM with two HD, HOD with crit focus, with focus on crit substats. Okay, substats. It's triple HP. It's triple HP. But we focus on crit substats, as you can see here, which is why it has this level of crit. And next, we have the 2 TOTM 2 GD or Wanderers with a focus on crit as well, so that you can compare, right, between the 2 HOT and 2 GD slash WT. And then we have one which is still triple HP, all three are triple HP. This is triple HP, but with an EM focus. So that's why the crit stats are just 550, the base default. And you do see that it has higher HP than the rest of them. Okay, R1, R5, this R1, this R5. It has higher HP than the rest of them. The rest of the triple HP, because it can afford to get flat HP stats, since we are completely ignoring crit stats. And obviously, since I'm going full EM, then we go Wanderers. We, there's no, no need to go HOD. And then we have triple EM with HP substat focus, which right off the bat, you can see that the HP is lower. Yeah, you, you, you just can't achieve higher HP than this. And, but in return, the EM is much higher, right? Look at the total EM here. Now, I obviously included buffs, and I'll talk more about buffs later, don't worry. But this is the type of EM you can you can get on your Nilo, okay? While still getting almost 70k HP. Or in some cases, beyond 70k HP. It's looking really good. Hmm. Okay, now ER is uh, 144. This is for the sake of my math, because if I put it as 145, my math template will make it more one more row than is required. And my ER here is average. Remember, my math is always based on the average ER. So if you get slightly better, slightly, slightly better than average, you will hit that 145. It's not an issue. Besides, even if you don't hit 145, 144 will, should, should still be enough. Alright, so I'm going to skip the damage figures. Those are the stats. Okay, so you know the artifact permutation, the stats, the HP, the EM, the crit stats. I'm not going to talk about attack because she doesn't skill off attack at all. So let's look at the damage now. It's going to be a long session because you can see, right? When you see this amount of blend spaces, it means that there's this amount of different sections within this subsession. <laughs> okay, but don't worry. I'll step you guys through it. It's so that you guys can understand eventually how I derive my figures. Otherwise, I know that there will be people who comment, Oh, you should not be doing the math like this. It's unfair, blah, blah, blah. I'll show you guys why it's not unfair. So this right now is without a bountiful cost, i.e. this is purely the de talent damage. Okay, this is purely the talent damage from Nilo. No body full cards, no reactions, just talent damage. So it looks pretty bad, right? And C6 is 377k in 20 seconds. What is this? This is crap. It's pretty bad without body full cards. But we should include body full cards. Come on. It is her feature. So just just look at this, huh? You see a big difference, right? This is your C6. It's more than double. But I'll, I'll talk more about that later. So let's include the five bountiful calls we assume to be triggered by her. This is how it looks like with the five bountiful calls. So after including the only the five bountiful calls, the damage is still pretty low, but it's quite a substantial boost, given that it's only five bountiful calls. And damage is still pretty low. And HP slash hydro slash crit. Is still the best performer here, right? But it's only leading the second best, which is triple HP with uh, crit substats. Okay, here and this and this, or this and this, if you so prefer, by 5.5% at C0 and 11% at C6. It's down from 35% at C0 and 30% at C6 initially, without the bountiful cost. So we see that once we include 5 multiple costs, the difference between HP Hydro Crit and HP 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 with Crit Substat shrinks drastically. 
But there's a couple of factors to take note here. First, this is single target. Bountiful Cores have quadratic scaling with their big AoE, i.e. Easily, uh, easily achievable even without poly mobs. We have not included the HP scaling of Bountiful Cores for the rest of the Bountiful Cores triggered by teammates. Because it's, that's unfair, right? Because that's what Nilo contributes to the team. It's her contribution. So let's include just the HP scaling portion for now. And if I do that, okay, if I do that, look at the difference here. So with the HP scaling factor in now, since Nilo contributes to that, right? HP Hydro Creek is actually no longer the best. From C0 to C5, it's no longer the best. Just look at this. There's no scenario where it is better, row for row. It's only better at C6 now, and it's only by 0.6%. So I would say it's pretty much the same as C6. But it's worse than Triple HP with crit subsets before C6. So this should give you an indication that Triple HP with crit subsets is better than HP Hydro Creek for Nilo Me in Bloom but this is just single target, remember? Remember the quadratic scaling I mentioned earlier? So let's just increase the number of enemies from 1 to 2. Ah, crap, hand. Okay, hand on a moment. Alright, so this is the damage figures once we scale our number of enemies from 1 to 2. This is still single target damage, by the way. This is in a scenario where you have two enemies, you are able to do this amount of damage to each of them. Provided your Nilo talent damage can hit each of them. Which means that if you guys realize how I'm calculating the math, I'm being very generous to the talent damage because there are going to be scenarios. There will be more scenarios where the talent damage cannot hit certain enemies, where but the bountiful cost can. Because bountiful cost has a bigger AoE than her talent damage. At least her ease. Okay? So, yeah, in case you think that I'm being heavily skewed towards Bountiful Cause, I'm not actually in the math. I'm actually being <laughs> very generous to the talent damage. Okay, so typically I would say it's closer to 3 to 5 enemies on average, especially in Abyss, right? Right now, there's always like 3 fungi together. Each uh, wave, they, they spawn subsequently. Now, but just looking at 2 enemies, right? The quadratic scaling allows triple HP to outperform HP Hydro Creep further. 600k versus 524k at C0. These are really pretty good figures at C0, by the way. So it's 14% difference here and a 8.9% difference here. So now even the triple HP with screw substat is better. In fact, the triple HP with EM substats actually outperforms triple HP with crit. At certain constellations starting from two enemies onwards. And I'll go over to more detail on this in the artifact comparison. In fact, I'll, once I, I include even more body for cost, it'll be different. But don't worry, I'll talk about that later. Before that though, I want to address the damage performance and how to balance the EM across the other characters too. Because if you look at the damage figures, Caesar is pretty decent. It's actually on par with Sino 10 second Q. So I, and I, I compare 10 Sino 10 second Q because that's the one where the overall rotation is 21 seconds. So it's pretty close to 20 seconds here. And Sino is actually pretty good with his signature weapon, even though he's Doom posted. But I can understand if he's been Doom posted without his signature weapon. Because it does look like his signature weapon gives him quite a fair bit over the others. C6 Nilo, however, is bad. Okay? C6 for a 5 star character not hitting 1 million is pretty bad. But here's the thing Nilo's design actually spits off her damage contribution to the other teammates for the bountiful cost that they are triggering too. Without Nilo, there is no bountiful cost. So if you look at her damage performance with all the bountiful cost included, i.e. the 14 bountiful cost instead of just the 10 trigger, oh sorry, the 5 trigger from her, because th that's my enemy, okay? The 5 trigger from her plus the H nine, HP screen for 9 of the others. We should not do that. We should include the full 14 per enemy. So if you have 3 enemies, it's going to be 14 and 3, 42. And I can already hear the complaints, right? Oh, but Nilo requires teammates to outbuild EM. Hyperbole only requires one. Nilo is so bad, blah, blah, blah. Let's look at the EM distribution next. Okay, let's look at the EM distribution. I'll cover this, don't worry. How much EM do you really need to build on your other teammates beside Nilo? Because we can say that, oh, this this, this, this is just a problematic design, right? <clears throat> uh, I can build full EM on Nilo, but if Nilo doesn't proc the bountiful cause, I lose a lot of damage in my comp. 
Is that really the case? Let's look at the buffs. Okay. I think most people may not have realized this yet, but the actual amount of EM you need to actually invest is not that high for the other teammates. Specifically in a double dendro double hydrocomb. Or rather a double dendro double dendro comb. Because in hyper bloom you don't have the you will not be doing double dendro. Okay, in hyper bloom you will not be double doing double dendro. So there's no double dendro in hyper bloom. We will not you will not get this level of EM buff. So we look at both F2P spender and also the disgusting wheels. Okay. <laughs> F2P DMC gives you 60. I know it takes time to ramp up, but I'm just gonna take 60. I'm not gonna torture myself by increasing it slowly per second by six. Dendro resonance is 80, it's not 100. Why? Because we are not doing second step reaction in the full core comp. If you remember how dendro resonance works, the last 20 EM requires you to do the second step reaction, which will be the aggravate spread hyper bloom version. And we are not doing those in this comp, so it's only 80, not 100. Nilo A1 passive gives you 100 EM. C4 Cole gives you 60. Now, I know people say, oh, this is not F2P, it's C4. Even F2P will eventually get C4 Cole. In fact, there's two free Cole, right? There's one from the 3.0 event, Graven Instance. There's one from Spiral Abyss starting from 3.1. It's already sh this is already shared in the official 3.1 stream. So you already get two free copies. You just need three more. I believe I do believe that you will eventually get that as you start to pull and stuff. Okay, so I consider this as F2P. Also because it makes the final figure very nice. It's a total of 300 EM here. Okay. So like I said, in Hyper Bloom, you will not typically put two Dendro. We have two Dendro characters here that each provide an EM buff on top of Dendro Resonance. So even for F2P, oh, and on top of that for Nilo L1 passive. So even for F2P player, you get 300 EM just from Team Bus. Okay, 300 EM just from Team Bus. That's pretty good. Next, Spender. Spender, I assuming is like a moderate spender, you know, it's not a disgusting wheel. Your R1 allergy, you have an R1 allergy, you have an R1 Nilo, Nilo signature weapon. And 137 EM here is based on stats I've permitted above, those HP stats that I've shared earlier. Because that's how her signature weapon works, it gives you EM uh, based on the, her HP. And this is the EM team buff only, not the EM to her herself from that weapon. So, Spender gets like 537 EM team buff, which is, if you think about it, it's slightly more equivalent to full EM from artifacts alone. At least the main stat. Why is 7x3? Huh? Okay. Yeah. R5 Allergy and R5 Nilo Signature Weapon. This is Mega Wheel level. Okay. So for such a wheel situation, if you don't understand how the math works, by the way, it's 200 plus 2A6 plus D300 here, because this applies to them, right? So there's 786 EM team buff provided to everyone, which is equivalent to like an EM weapon plus full EM from artifacts alone. That's absolutely disgusting. Oh, and by the way, I do not fall into this category, okay? Because I have not pulled for R5 weapons for almost a year now. But I'm not gonna lie, I'm very tempted to pull for R5 allergy. <laughs> It's coming, right? It's going to be with Sino's uh, signature weapon. Uh, yeah, let's see how that goes. <laughs> now, I hope the above shows you that you don't need to really go full EM from your artifacts for the body 4 cost to deal good damage because team buffs cover a lot of it. Even for F2P, you get 300 EM, man. Don't tell me 300 EM is too low, okay? 300 EM is like two EM weapons or 1.5 EM weapons, whatever type of weapon it is. So it is very substantial. Don't be uh, don't be complaining for the sake of complaining. All right. Oh, and more EM still helps, definitely. But you also need to factor in the diminishing returns. So what I want to say here is that you don't need to complain about farm, having to refund full set artifact or having to invest in EM heavily for the team bits in party full core. Com. What you need would be one to two EM main stats plus a few EM sub stats slash upgrades here and there. And couple that with the full with the team buffs, right? You will be doing high damage, bountiful cost. Oh, and EM have weapon will help as well. Okay, if it fits. For example, allergy. Allergy gives you EM from the uh, effect, right? Now, just to share, my colleague currently has 313 EM, Kokomi 263 EM DNC594. After I tweak around to match uh, this particular comp. But the DNC EM may drop. Because I need, I will probably need an ER sense with full EM substance instead of EM sense. So DMC will likely drop. 
But what I'm trying to go here is that you can get this amount of EM along with the stats that they actually need. For example, crit stats on Kole, 40 plus K HP on Kokomi with R5 prototype Ember, CR for DMC for bonus. So all of these EM levels are with these stats already in place. But DMC can afford to go higher EM in my opinion because uh, DMC has EM skilling anyway. Yeah, you can give her, her, her or him the EM goblet. I think it's fine. Okay, so now that this sentencing is established, right? Now that we understand that the team buff plays a substantial factor, the EM team buff plays a substantial factor in the EM levels of the other teammates other than Nilo, I'm going to look at Nilo with full bountiful core damage. I'll show you guys what the damage is like at specific EM levels as well. Because based on that, I can then go tell you guys what is the EM target for the Nilo teammates and it's actually backed by damage figures. It is backed by the complete damage figures. Nilo's HP, EM team buffs, and what is the EM target for Nilo teammates. I'm very happy that I'm able to share this. In fact. Alright. So, yeah. I actually think that you do not need that much uh, EM. And I'll, I'll talk about what is the EM target. But first, let's look at the full main damage uh, slash DPS. Oh, actually, it's just the damage. I didn't go DPS this time around. Because there's way too many figures already. Now, I'm going to do quadratic skilling as well. Not just two enemies. I'm going to show you guys up to three. Because if I show you guys fight, it will be too long. <laughs> okay. So against one enemy, this is the figure. Uh, unfortunately, Excel hand on me again. Uh, just too much content. Okay, I'm sorry about that. That skip. But uh, SL hand on me. Okay, so this, as you can see, are the damage figures. This is with one enemy and all multiple costs included. So this is Nilo's talent damage plus 14 multiple costs. And why am I doing this? Because I have the EM levels here, right? I want to show you guys. Everyone in the team get can get something like this. Well, maybe Nilo gets something like this. And this is the type of damage you can expect. You see that per enemy it skills quite fantastically. It skills by 410k. And this is the triple HP with crit, not the triple HP with EM, which has higher HP. So two enemies, it goes up to 1.2 million at C6, 938k at C0. Three enemies is 1.35 million and 1.8 million. It's really OP for C0. 1.35 million. I have never done any math where that 5 star character can contribute 1 million damage at C0. Now, I know that some of the bountiful costs here are being triggered by other teammates, but I just showed you guys, right? You don't need high EM. You just need to invest a little bit more EM. Coupled with the EM team buffs, you can achieve, you can, you can still have the stats that you need on the other characters to do the other stuff, be it for Vornius or Kokomi's HP. And at the same time, deal out this kind, dish out this kind of damage. It's it's insane. Because this is single target. This is not multiplying by the number of targets in terms of overall damage. Okay? This is quadratic scaling. So this is the amount of damage you deal to each target in that dendro uh sorry, in the bountiful core explosion. Which remember it's a bigger radius than the normal dendro core. So you have to multiply this by the number of enemies. So in this case, against three enemies, I can do 1.8 million or 1.35 million per enemy. Multiply, but multiply that by three, you have 5 million. Sorry, 4 million at C0. What am I talking about? 4 million at C0. 5 million plus uh, at the uh, C6. So I hope you guys see how in bar the involved full cost damage is actually. And how it's actually not that difficult to achieve that. While still being able to get stats on your other characters that they need. Be it CR or HP. But I'll, I'll say this though. Nilo's bountiful cost performance is very dependent on quadratic schooling. Just like the very first freeze comp, the gun you freeze comp. And in fact, it's even more so. Because her talent damage is lower than just one enemy skilling. And I'll show you guys the damage skilling next. Oh, and by the way, even against one enemy... Here, one enemy here, with all 14 cores included, 
you'll see that the Triple HP with EM Substats is doing better than the Triple HP with Crit. Although it's uh, slightly better, but eventually, oh, eventually at C6, it, the Triple HP with Crit does do better against my enemy. But is it really worthwhile to be that way? We'll talk about it in the artifact comparison. But first off, let's look at the damage scaling per enemy. So this is the damage scaling per enemy. Every enemy added in gives you 410k or in fact I should use the triple HP EM right. For okay, 410k might be better because we if we consider the prop being done by other characters, right? Or even 335k. But I don't want to use this 335k because it's not accurate. It should be more than this if you have the same HP level. Because you gotta remember the HP levels between these two are different. Okay, the HP levels between these two are different. In fact, this is quite a fair bit lower than this. So even if you have a 700 plus EM, you will deal more than this. Okay, please remember, you will deal more than this. Now, Bountiful Cost Performance. I wanted to provide this damage scaling view because quadratic scaling is so important for Bountiful Cost Performance. I did not do a separate one, by the way. If you want me to be 100% accurate, right, I should be doing a separate one with HP being the same. But I did not do so because I wanted to match against what I have here in terms of artifact permutation. Okay, so five enemies is, is easily two million damage just from the bountiful cost, right? And you realize that when I say five million, I'm talking about this, right? This, right? Not this. This. Oh, and five million is just the bountiful cost. If I add the talent damage, then it's something like uh, sorry, not 5 million, 2 million. If I add the talent damage, it's something like 2.4 million. You add C6. At C0, then it's like 2.1, 2.2. Now, realistically speaking, to achieve such figures, the enemies must be tough enough for you to, to be able to hit them, right? But I, I think this gives you a good idea of how bountiful cost work. And even if the enemies are not tough enough and enemies go by wave, if they reach you within 1 to 2 seconds, there's still no difference in the number of bountiful cost because that's the amount of time you take between each reaction. And even if they take longer, it's only a drop in one to two costs. In fact, I'll say it's only one call. It shouldn't take more than two costs. So it's not an issue. It's really, really fantastic, this bountiful call. So I hope it's clear how OP bountiful calls are starting from two enemies. And the more you have, the greater it is. It's, it's quadratic scaling is crazy. The quadratic scaling that it has is really crazy. Now, a single target scenario wouldn't be as good though. But it's still 520k plus as C0, right? 520k, 538k at C0, which is still really good for a C0 figure. Based on the math that I've done previously for other characters. Okay, so those are the damage. I hope you guys can appreciate how I derived to this figure. This is why I resign it takes so long, right? Because if I just started, imagine if I just started the math with just this calculation and then people will come and and, and how me to say, hey, you should not be including all the bounty core damage, bounty full core damage for Nilo's calculation. Now you see why I did all the step, the progressive math earlier. is to show you guys that we should, because it's only with Nilo that you can do this. And also, you don't need high EM investment. But when I say we don't need high EM investment, what are we talking about here? Let's look at the EM targets for the Nilo teammates back by damage figures. So this, I'll use the damage scaling here again. This is the exact same figure as the damage scaling. Let me let me analyze based on this figure. I will focus on the triple HP builds where possible because the HP is closest between these two. In fact, this the HP within these two permutations are the same, but the HP on this is slightly higher than this two because we can afford to get flat HP. Essentially, if you look at the 844 EM versus the 924 EM, which is almost 100 EM apart, it's 80 EM apart with the same amount of HP. There isn't much of a damage boost anymore, right? If you look at it, right? Uh, let's look at C0. It's about 14k difference. Which with 14 cores, it's about 1k damage per bountiful core. So even after, once you hit 800 EM with the high amount of HP that we have here, right? Your okay, actually that the HP doesn't really matter because EM scaling and HP scaling is separate. But effectively, what I'm trying to say here is that 800 plus EM is a good spot point to stop if you do not want to invest in too much EM because you 
when you go further, right, you only get 1k more damage per Bountiful Core. So it's not required. 700 plus should be fine too. Now remember, the actual 700 plus figure is not this. My HP is lower. My HP is lower in this permutation in order to get the crit stats for this permutation. So, it should be higher than this, which will give us a better figure. In fact, I'll say the 700 plus figures, right? If you, if you think about it and you add on a certain amount to it, a little bit more to it because the HP is lower. Wow. It's about... I don't have the exact math, but it's a few K per Bountiful Core. So you multiply that for 14, right? It's quite substantial. Okay, it shouldn't be like 200, 335. It may be something like 360, 370, 360 to 380 K. Okay. In fact, if you think about it in one way, right? The 700 plus figures is actually a good indication for F2P players. The figures right here, not the 360 to 380K that I talk about, but let's say this figure here. Why? Because this is about 54K HP on this artifact build. And F2P players, I do believe that uh, you should be able to get 60K. I've not done the math, I don't know the math, but you should be able to get 60K. Because Nilo's base HP is at 15K, her signature weapon gives you 66 plus 20, so that's 86%. It's still less than, it's, it should be about 12, 13k. So maybe uh, something like 58k. But with flat HP, good flat HP rolls, you may be able to get 60k. So I definitely recommend going higher than 54k where possible. Seriously, get as much HP as possible on Nilo. Because if you remember my Nilo Math Guide 2, Bountiful Calls will be on par with Hyper Bloom slash Project at 750 EM at 60k HP. So you definitely want to go as high as possible. If you can achieve 60k HP and 7 plus, 100 plus EM, you know that your Bountiful Core will deal the same damage as the Hyper Bloom slash Burgeon. But, but, Hyper Bloom slash Burgeon has no quadratic scaling. Okay, Burgeon has, but Burgeon is difficult to do the quadratic scaling like uh, Bountiful Core. But Hyper Bloom definitely has no quadratic scaling. But body full core has. Okay? It's really, really OP, man. Okay, so to summarize, F2P players go for 750 EM. 750 EM is a good minimum target because you have 300 EM from team buffs, so you need about, what, 450 EM? For spenders, 800 to 900 EM is a good minimum target with 537 EM from team buffs. For wheels, 1000 EM is a good minimum target with 786 EM from team buffs, or you can just not get it and just take the team buffs <gasps> but you know since you can afford to get a little em why not for the wheels anyway so generally speaking i'll say it's going you should go for 250 to 400 plus em on the teammates especially if you want them to have other stats example er on your dmc because dmc although we say that uh you can go em schooling right <laughs> dmc needs a lot of er okay so you need er on dmc you need hp on kokomi you need crit on kole so that she was in aggravate as well if you are greedy, like me. So, you can definitely achieve 250 to 400 plus EM while still having decent ER, HP, and crit on these respective characters. Do you see now the beauty? The beauty of the entire com, the way the EM team parts are coming into play from all the different characters, from all the different sources. It's actually really good that you only need 250 to 400 plus EM on the teammates and everyone will be able to prop like a 800 plus 700 plus or 1000 plus em multiple cost which hits really hard when your hp nilo hp is also high now you can always go higher em you can go higher than 250 and 400 plus you can go full em even if you want to if you really like multiple call that much but you have to be okay with lowering, lowering their other stats or maybe if they're EM skilling, you know, you go for more EM, like DMC. Or if it makes sense for them, you use an EM weapon, like Kole with Allergy. Hmm, uh, you see what I'm talking about? But obviously, you can also use the other EM weapons, okay? Or your other characters, be it Kole, DMC, or Kokomi. But I hope this gives you an idea, okay? You don't need to full invest EM in the Bountiful Core. The team buffs really, really contribute a lot. There's a reason why... Nilo's A1 passive was increased from 60 to 100, right? Because they realized this problem. Niho, Mihoyo or Hoyo vs realized this problem. That's why they went to do it. They increased the amount of EM buff because so that 
so as to make it such that the EM team buff has a substantial figure even at F2P levels. You see now, it's a really good design. All you need is 250 to 400 plus EM on the teammates. Okay? And the bountiful core damage will be high. High enough across BV, whether it's triggered, regardless of who it's triggered by. Of course, you can go full EM if you don't mind risking the other stats. Definitely, you do you, man. Maybe I'll try it out if I have the artifacts to do it. I'll try it out and I'll compare when uh, Nilo is out. Phew. <sighs> like I said, this is a long video. Okay, artifact comparison. Builds, means that subsets, etc. Let's go. Now, against one enemy. Because I, that's quadratic skilling, right? So I have to compare one enemy, two enemy, three enemies. Now you know why this math video is long. And think about the amount of time it took me to do this. Ugh. Okay. So the red figures here implies that this uh this particular artifact combination is worse than the two tenacity, two GD or WT, which is the Gilded Dreams of Wanderers, with an EM subset focus. Okay, this is what I'm saying here. So even in a single target scenario, even just against one enemy without the quadratic skilling coming into play, from C0 to C3 with R1 signature weapon. 2 Tenacity, 2 GD, slash uh, WT, triple HP, means that with EM substats focus, it's the best. Look at this, from C0 at R1, okay, C0 at R1, to C3, it's always the best. These are all red, which means that this is better. From C4 plus with R1 signature weapon, the HP, HP with crit substats do uh, slightly better. Because remember, the talent damage gets improved more, right? For C, from C4 to C6, they don't do anything. Her C4 to C6 doesn't really do anything for multiple calls. It's for her own personal talent damage. Which is the reason why it manages to now do slightly better than the H triple HP VM focus. But you gotta remember, this is just one enemy, okay? <laughs> so for C6, the crit builds are always better. In fact, it's quite... Quite a big difference, right? It's ten percent. You see, really good. Yeah, it's ten percent. It's really good. And in fact, the triple HP with crit is better than the HP hydro crit for Nilo as a main DPS in Broncom. Hmm, it's looking bad for HP hydro crit. I know people always say, "Oh, if you want, if you want main DPS, go HP hydro crit." You see, now that's not the case, right? Even the triple HP does better. It's the same case as well. The smaller the percentage figure here, the better uh, artifact is. Okay? Because this is difference. So HP, triple HP with crit, starts better than triple H but that's better than HP hydro crit. So this is something you will never know until until you do the math. And this is the most favored scenario for the HP hydro crit. Oh, and uh, by the way, triple EM with HP substats is always worse than HP HP with EM substats in every scenario. Why? Because the HP is too low. You can't get high enough HP when you go triple EM with HP substats. So just drop the idea, okay? Just drop the idea. I know it's easier. It may be easier. It may feel easier to get EM main stat with HP upgrades compared to HP with EM upgrades, but you also get a lot more HP main stack artifacts to try. Right? So just drop this idea, okay? This, this, this crap. In fact, it's still better than HP Hydro Creed at C0, by the way. <laughs> okay. Next, against two enemies. Okay, now with two enemies, the bountiful calls are doubled. Talent damage remains the same. Because this is single target damage, huh? Yeah, single target damage. Quadratic skilling, remember. So now, once we skill up to two enemies, HP Hydro Creep falls off very badly. Yeah, falls off very badly. Look at this. Even C6 is, is worse off than HP HP with EM focus. Triple HP with EM focus is still better than the HP Hydro Creep, even at C6, where it's supposed to work better for the crit stats. So effectively, what I can say here is that with two enemies, right, triple HP with EM subset focus is always better than crit subsets before C6. Holy shit, right? <laughs> just two enemies. The quadratic skilling is so crazy that with just two enemies, 
the triple HP Yuan Sussex will already perform better than Crit Sussex with C6. It's always better than HP Hydro Crit. At C6 though, the 2 HOD permutation is slightly lower than the 2 GD, while slightly higher at R5, and also better than the triple HP. But are you really going to go C6 and then do this artifact just for this amount of improvement over the triple HP with EM? Think about it. Not to mention the triple HP with EM allows you to get slightly more HP in terms of getting more flat HP rolls and upgrades, which then translates to better bountiful card damage for the entire team. Hmm, yeah? Now let's look at the three enemy skilling. <laughs> with three enemies, Triple HP is a e with EM Sussex is a clear winner here. I know there are some black figures here instead of red, right? But look at the amount of percentage here. It's 0 0.1%, 0.4%, it requires R5. R5 of the signature weapon. So with 0 0.41 and 0 0.4, it's pretty much the same damage. So with that, right, obviously you should just go for this, right? So let's go to our conclusion. To summarize, even with Nilo as main DPS in a Bloom comp, okay? 2 Tenacity, 2 WT slash GD with triple HP and EM Sustat Focus is still the best artifact penetration to go for her. I know people expect that uh, when you're doing main DPS, you should be doing HP Hydro Creep. But it's not the case when you're in a Bloom Comp. Okay? Even using Nilo as a main DPS in Bloom Comp, you're still better off going triple HP with EM Substats. No, there's one, to be fair, there's one scenario where the difference is more significant and that's C6 versus single target. Sorry, I shouldn't say single target. C6 versus one enemy. Okay, one enemy. So like, for example, versus bosses, then the C6 is better. But, so so if you did get C6 Nilo, which by the way is looking very bad in value. If you know how to look at the damage figures, it's looking very, very bad in value. Okay, look at this. What is this? It skills that little. In fact, it's C4. It's the different, the C4 to C6 doesn't do any C4, okay. C4 helps with the bountiful core damage slightly in terms of reducing your ER and thus allowing you to get other stats, right? But it's not a bit of improvement. 475 versus 497. Even the C0 C6 is pathetic. Okay? That's pathetic, and I'll tell you guys why. So with C6 Nilo, technically speaking, you can go Triple HP with Crit if you want, but just bear in mind that you will do worse off than Triple HP with EM once there are three or more enemies. In fact, even when there are two enemies, right, you, you're only ever so slightly better than Triple HP with Crit. So it's, it's a very, very slight difference. It's a very, very slight improvement. It's not worth it. Okay, in the first place, right, I don't recommend C6 Nilo. As OP as the C6 Nilo sounds giving you 120 CV, right? Why? Because C0 C6 is 31 to 36 percent when you have three enemies. This is with three enemies, and this is the lowest C0 C6 value I have ever seen so far. And I tell you, C6 Nilo will have even lower value in off-field and able role. Right now, I'm giving, I'm being really generous to the C6 and the the crit build, right? By doing the main DPS first. When you do the off-field and able, the contribution from crit stats is gonna be even worse because you're not on-field to do damage, and her off-field. Her aura doesn't do damage. Her off your aura doesn't do damage. It only applies wet. But to be fair, right? To be fair, right? The reason why the C0 C6 is so bad is that her C0 C6, if you only look at the talent damage, it's actually awesome. C0 C6 is a 137% boost if you only look at her talent damage. And it's really OP. And Sinos is 138 to 141%. I already said that Sinos C6 is OP. Okay? So it's on the same level. But only for Nilo's talent damage. Which is a small part of her kit. Compared to Sino, where the talent damage is everything for him. <laughs> you, you see where I'm going here? In fact, if you're a C6 wheel, right? You will see Nilo's damage, talent damage more than doubled. And the feel-good factor will be there. Right, because you see your Nilo hitting so hard compared to other players and it's like, whoa, we are doing more than two times the damage on our E. <laughs> the problem though is that in Bloomcom, with Hydro Dendro only, her talent damage at C6 is actually lower than the damage per enemy from Bountiful Cost at C0. Remember when I talk about optimizing the Bountiful Cost at C0 with Triple HP and EM, right? We have like what, 460k? 464k. If you remember her damage, her talent damage without any bountiful cost at C6 R1, you know how much it is? 377k. 
Okay, so it's a matter of 377k versus 466k. 464k. 366 versus 464k. C6 versus C0. So, <laughs> yeah, it's really bad. For her, that's why I say, do you guys remember in Math Guide, I think one, right? I was talking about how Nilo has a really, really good design for F2P characters. This is why, well, this, this shows you, right? The damage figures shows you. You can go F2P on Bloom comps and do a lot of damage and C6 is not going to have a huge advantage over you. In fact, only C2 arguably has a decent advantage uh, if you're in the off-field enable comp, not for the main DPS comp. Even the main DPS comp, main DPS comp C2 over C0 is like 17 to 18%. Okay? Now, oh, more, more importantly, more importantly, I've been comparing one enemy, right? <laughs> Talent damage does not have quadratic schooling at bountiful cost. And with the quadratic schooling, the C0, C6 then drops statistically to the 31 to 36% that I mentioned versus three enemies. Can you imagine from 137% it dropped all the way to 30, 31, 36%, depending on whether you have R1 or R5. Even against one enemy, by the way, against one enemy, C0, C6 is only 32 to 58%. It's not 137%, which is understandable, right? Because that C066 only works on the talent damage. It doesn't want the bountiful core. So with the bountiful cost already doing a lot of damage at C0, it causes the C066 percentage to drop drastically. Okay, even against one enemy. Okay, let me drill that in you guys' head. Even against one enemy, the C066 is only 32 to 58%. Across the different artifact permutations. So yeah, this this is this might be the biggest C six trap I've ever seen in this game so far, <laughs> right? Because your C six, wow, your talent damage is more than double. Your E is doing more than double the damage. But if you factor in the bountiful cost, which is not easy to take a keep track of in terms of the overall damage, which is why our math is here, you are getting so little value out of C zero C six. But to be fair, to be fair, this is main DPS, okay? So main DPS C1 effect is very, very small as opposed to the off field enabler C1 effect. Because the off field enabler C1 effect gives you three additional applications, which is three more bountiful costs per enemy. It's a huge boost for the off field enabler. I have not done the math for the off field enabler, but just looking at it this way, I think it's a huge, huge boost. So I hope you guys see now why I did the poll for the forward, forward vape Nilo. I'm not trying to force forward vape on her. I'm just curious because. Her C6 is so bad. It's so bad for her as a main DP, even as a main DPS in Bloomcom. That's why I'm wondering if her C6 would be going forward a bit. But this is just curi curiosity. Okay, but it's not going to be a high priority math. But if you look at the quadratic damage scaling, right, I'm pretty sure Bountiful Cost will still be better than forward it. Because your forward it is only on the talent damage, right? It's not as big of an AoE as the Bountiful Cost. And if you want to vape consistently on her the third hit of her E, most likely you can't vape her Q. You can only vape the first hit, maybe. That's it. Yeah, it's a pretty bad situation for her, unless you have double hydro, but it's not going to be easy. Double hydro, you may not have enough uh, pyro. You may not have enough pyro to do your quadratic schooling. Oh, sorry, not quadratic schooling, what I'm talking about. To do your forward vapes. Okay. Oh, and as I mentioned, right, her off field enabler in Bloom Kong will have even better damage because more body of course to generate. And not just C1, okay? At C0, the off field enabler already has two more instances. No, three more instances because you don't need to cast Q. Or rather, the Q, the Q being cast after the third step of the dance doesn't interfere with her application per se. Uh, no, not necessary. It, we'll just take it as the additional two instances because of the additional four seconds. At C0, at C6, you get another three. So it's five more hydro instances. Now, that's where the 0.5 S dendro starts to come in. Okay. Now, what this means is that she is very complete F2P wise for Broomcom. You can go up to C2 if you want to increase uh, body full core damage further, but she works very well at C0. Just look at the damage figure. Okay. We are talking about, we are already at the 1 million damage threshold at C0. Let me go back, huh? let me go back and show you guys. Where is it? 
against two enemies, if you go triple H with EM with a signature weapon, you're at 1 million. Against three, mili three enemies at C0 R1, you are 1.47 million. Now, let's say if you are, if you're not using the signature weapon, you can't get as much HP. Even if it falls off, right, it's still going to be more than 1 million against three enemies. It's crazy good, man. It's OP. You need to understand how it works. Just because it's different from the current meta doesn't mean it's bad. It's going to give you something very different from the current meta. Ah, very OP. As long as you have two to three enemies. Even one enemy, the triple HP is still better. The triple HP stat is still better. That's how good the bountiful calls are. Okay. Oh my god, this video is one hour long already. And I have a very long TLDR because I have a very long session here, right? But we are soldier through. I hope you guys are still following. Okay, first off, let's talk about the TLDR. Yeah, I have to split the TLDR into different sections. So, number one, double dendro, double hydro for the two resonance. Healer is very required in my opinion because bountiful calls explode really fast and you have a lot of generation. So without dendro healer, there are not much options yet. In this math guide, we will look at Nilo as main TPS. Nilo offline and blur will be next. This is the rotation. DMC. So we have DMC, Kole, Kokomi, and Nilo. Nilo doing main DPS in this video. Unfortunately, in order to optimize multiple cost generation, there are a few areas that are not optimized in return. Please refer to a specific session for details, especially if you are wondering about the Kokomi kill or the Nilo normal attacks. Okay? I'm not going to cover it here. Just know that for the sake of the bountiful core generation and needles damage, there are a few areas that are not optimized. With uh, bountiful core having a higher priority than her damage as well. Energy wise, Nilo does need some ER, 145 ER. And, uh, oh wait, sorry, this should be with. 145 ER and 110 ER with C4. So without C4, you need 145 ER. With C4, you need 110 ER. This is with two DMCEs and two Favonias. If you don't do this, this you will need a lot more ER. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, I've been talking for an hour. It's natural that I cough, right? <clears throat> with fifteen to sixteen dendro application instances and fourteen hydro instances in the entire com with Nilo as main, there should be fourteen bloom specs. For Nilo bloom props, my math will assume five bountiful calls, but her being in the prop is not as crucial per se, and it will be explained later too. Please refer to the important notes and assumptions as well as Nilo main stats and artifact permutation for other details. I'm not going to do TRDR for these two sessions. There's no way I can do it. Let's refer to the actual sessions itself. Okay. Okay, next, Nilo's damage. Please, please, please refer. I'm going to highlight this in red. Please refer. Sorry. Please refer to the specific session for the details of how I'm calculating her damage. Progressively for the calculations to make sense. Yeah, my SL decided to hand on me. Oh, I'm doing this. Excellent, man. Just excellent. Now, note that Nilo's multiple cores has graduated scaling and it's a huge AoE compared to Gan Yu's and Ayato's Q, even if there's no mod pool in the comp. Okay? Because Gan Yu and Ayato's Q quadrat scaling is actually very small. If you think about it, the, the hitbox is very, very small. You need pools in order to get that quadrat scaling. Nilo does not require it. That's why she can do without an animal character. That's why she can survive with a double dendro, double hydro. Now, typically, I would say it's closer to five, three to five enemies on average, especially in Abyss. Yay, finally it's done. Okay? But just looking at two enemies, right? Just looking at two enemies, right? The quadratic scaling allows triple HP to perf outperform HP hydro crit significantly. 40% at C0, 8.9% at C6. In fact, triple HP VM success actually outperforms triple HP crit stats at certain constitutions, starting from 2 enemy onwards, and I'll go into more detail on this in the Artifact Comparison section later. But effectively, right, looking at the damage figures, C0 is pretty decent. It's on par with Sino 10 second Q, who is actually pretty good with signature weapon, even though he's prone to don't post that as well. C6 however is bad. But here's the thing, okay, here's the thing. Nilo's damage actually speeds off her damage contribution to the other teammates for the multiple cost that they are triggering too. Without Nilo, there is no multiple cost. So we should look at her damage performance with all the multiple cost included. I can already hear the complaints. But Nilo requires teammates to all build EM. Hyper Blue only requires one. Nilo is so bad. Ugh, blah, blah, blah. Let's look at the EM distribution next, right? To see how to solve this. EM team buffs at F to P level, you get 300 EM. Spender, you get 537. Wheels, you get 786 EM. That's a huge amount of EM just from the team buffs. You don't need to build that high of an EM on your teammates. This argument is moot. Okay? This argument is not strong. 
Now, please refer to the specific session for the breakdown and on why you don't really need to go full yen on her teammates and why we include all bountiful girl damage when doing her math needs. So I talk about her damage here, but it's not the full damage, right? And I also ask you guys to refer to the specific session, okay? So you know how many bountiful costs are being included. What else is being included other than bountiful costs? Then, now that we have established this here, where with the EM team buffs, you don't need to do that much of an EM investment on your teammates, you can afford to get high EM, even with that, because of that, in fact, if, uh, actually. So the full damage on Nilo, this is the full damage, okay? With C0 R1 on Nilo and 800 plus EM on your teammates and against 1 to 3 enemies, the damage is 537k, 1 million and 1.46 million respectively. And this is single target damage, okay? This is the damage that you do per enemy because this is quadratic scaling. So that's really, really good for C0 R1 figures. I have never done a 1 million plus figure for C0 R1 before, okay? Never. If you scale up to 5 enemies, it's easily 2.5 million per enemy okay per enemy so if I, I can tell you it's about 400 plus k damage uh, per enemy skilling even at c0 so i hope it's clear the power of quadratic skilling for nilo and how good her bountiful costs are at c0 r1 now without her r1 weapon yes the hp will drop your bountiful core damage will drop but it's not going to drop to the extent of uh the crit being better no way because the bountiful core is just so op even with her signature weapon. And let me remind you again, okay? These are single target damage. Single target damage. It skills with the number of enemies, but it's single target damage. It's not like when I did my Yelan versus Ayato comparison, right? Where I, I multiplied Ye I, Ayato's damage by multiple enemies because to, to cover that whole uh, argument about Ye, uh, Yelan single versus Ayato AOE, right? If you want to calculate the total damage across enemies, the 1.4 million should be multiplied by 3. The 2.5 million should be multiplied by 5. Holy shit, right? It's a huge whoa. Okay? So, Nilo's Bountiful Core, that performance, is very dependent on quadratic scaling, just like the very first Frisco, kind of Frisco, maybe even more so. But it skills like crazy. It skills like crazy, man. 400k at C0 per enemy. Oh, what the... <laughs> Okay, so even against one enemy, triple HP with EM is the best performer in general as at C6. But I'll cover that in the uh, more mode next in the artifact comparison. But before I go into the artifact comparison, right, since now we have the damage figures, I'm going to talk about the EM targets backed by the damage figures. For F2P players, 750 EM is a good minimum target with 300 EM from team buffs. For spenders, 800 to 900 EM is a good minimum target with 537 EM from team buffs. For wheels, it's 1,786. So generally speaking, go for a 250 to 400 plus EM on the teammates, especially if you want them to have other stats. For example, you need to get ER on DMC, you need to get HP on Gogomi, you need to get crit on Kole, so that should work in Aggravate too. Okay? So this is what I'm talking about. You don't need to change, change the artifact set. You can just build a little bit more EM. And that little bit more EM also helps, right? In other comps, it helps. Uh, okay, at least for the two dangerous characters. Maybe for Kokobi, not as much in other comps. Yeah. Okay. So you can always go higher EM if you're okay with lowering their other stats because like I said, this is a good minimum target. Okay, it's minimum. You can go higher if you want to. If you if you're okay with lowering their EO, ER, their HP, or their crit. Uh, but ER for DMC, I don't recommend lowering. Yeah. You, you, her, her, the DMC Q is very important. Okay. Now, Another way of looking at it is that you can go higher EM when you have EM skilling or if it makes then sense for them to use EM weapon. Yeah? So there are many, many ways to, to build up that EM. 250 to 400 plus EM, by the way, is easily resolved by 1 to 2 main EM stat pieces, main stat pieces, plus some EM on your other rows and a little bit of EM upgrades here and there. Good enough. It's not that difficult. Like I said in the earlier session, I already shared, I'm already ready. My Kole has 300, my DMC has 600, but probably will drop to 400. And Kokomi has like almost 300. Okay? So, yeah, I hope this is a very, very important thing that you take home. Okay? You don't need to full go full EM on the teammates, even in a Bountiful Core. So, that argument about full all teammates having to build full EM versus only one character going full EM in Hyper Bloom, about the Bountiful Core versus Hyper Bloom. That argument is not as strong as you think. 
Now, artifact comparison. Even with Nilo as main DPS in a Bloom comp, I can tell you guys that this is the best artifact permutation to go for. Two Tenacity, two Wanderers slash Gilded Dreams. Triple HP means that with EM subsets. Now, there is one scenario where the damage uh, difference is more significant, and that's C6 versus one enemy, where triple HP crit subset is better. And it's not even the HP Hydro crit, by the way. Even though we are in, uh, in main DPS, but because we are in a Bloom comp, I can tell you triple HP with crit subset is still better than HP Hydro crit. Oh, and by the way, once you have two enemies, C6 triple HP with crit stats is only 1 to 3% better. Okay, 1 to 3% better and three man enemies onwards triple hp vm success always better even in c6 however i don't recommend c6 for her to begin with please refer to a specific session for the details and uh yeah triple em with hp success is always worse than triple hp with em success because it has lower hp you just cannot achieve a good amount of hp with that so really please don't go for triple em with hp unless you really have no choice Otherwise, don't go for it. Like for example, if you are if you only manage to get two good HP subsets with EM, uh, sorry, two good HP main stat and one good EM main stat, right? Then yeah, obviously you have to do something like that. But like a HP HP EM. But where possible, please go for triple HP with EM subset. Don't go with for triple EM with HP subsets. It's always worse than the uh, triple HP with EM subsets. So in conclusion. This is the artifacts I had to go for, even for Nilo as a main DPS in Bloomcom. I was kind of expecting that the HP, even if it's not the HP Hydro crit, I was expecting the triple HP with crit to do better. But because of how crazy the bountiful, bountiful core scaling is, triple HP with EM is better. Okay? And yes, I finally reached the end of this video. Oh my god, it's 1 hour and 16 minutes. I, I have to salute and applaud the viewers who watched the entire video. Okay? Thank you very much. But to be fair, I am doing like three math guides worth of uh, content into one. And why I did not split them, I already said in the intro, right? Because it loses the context. Okay? So Bloomcom main TPS plus EM target for target for teammates plus artifact comparison is now completed. Next video will be the Bloomcom off-field enabler. Now, EM targets and artifact comparison should have the same conclusion as the main TPS, so I'm not going to go deep in that. So the next video will be much shorter. Yeah, then this video is going to be much shorter because we already covered the, the huge chunk of it here. Okay, so that's the reason why I also removed the artifact comparison from here because it's, it's done. Okay, artifact comparison is done. EM target for teammates is done. Bloom comb, main TPS, it's done. Uh, the body full core mechanics, everything is done. Okay, so thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you guys next video. If you like the content in my video and click subscribe for more. Bye.